Jesus, we pray that you open our eyes this morning to see your word. We pray, oh Lord, that there will be no display of the flesh, but everything that will be displayed will be the spirit of the, of the Most High. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. I just want to preach to us today on, the, uh, on, the, on prayer. And then after then, we'll just go ahead and pray. Don't look behind, don't think that we are scanty here. But we are going to pray today. Hallelujah. Are we here? Just open up your spirits. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1. The Bible said that Jesus spoke a parable all to the end. That men ought always to pray. And the parable started by saying that there was a widow. Now my question is, who is a widow? Why did Jesus have to use a widow? Why not another person? Why a widow? And I started asking the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit made me to understand that a widow is somebody that is not privileged. And in that scenario, he represented us with, an, with the widow. He said that there was another man that was full of power. He said, this man had the ability. Amen. He said, this man had the ability to give what the widow desired. Hallelujah. Let's just pay attention here. We'll be praying shortly. Mashana Makotaya. But the Bible made me understand that this widow knew exactly how to get what she wants. I'll be talking on a prevailing prayer. There's a prayer that prevails. There's a particular kind of prayer that prevails. Lord, we pray that you open our eyes this morning in the name of Jesus. That a man can be weak, but if you know how to pray, you can, you can manipulate the hand of God into your situation. Now, Jesus said, this particular widow, he said, the judge said that by the continual coming of this widow, I have to grant a request. Now, it will, it will, it will, it will make more sense if you understand that God didn't grant that request because she was a widow, number one, or because he had a duty to her. But he said, I will grant this woman's request because of her continual coming. He said, because she wearies me. 
There is something about persistence in prayer. There is something about persistence that when we push up to an extent, God does not have a choice but to just open up and give us what we desire. And I just want you to follow carefully because we'll be praying vigorously this morning. I've been sent this morning and I'm not just coming as, a, as someone you know, trust me. I'm, I'm, I'm coming so that some things will be lifted. And just like Elijah said to Elisha, if you can see me as you go, you will have what you want. You will have that thing that you desire. If only you will see this morning. Can we open to the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 9? Luke. The book of Luke chapter 11. Luke 11, are we there? Now, Luke 11, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And then interestingly, after he taught them to pray, he gave an example. I will start reading from verse 6. Oh, from verse 5. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Now, it is important to note that midnight is a very uncomfortable hour to answer anybody, to answer any request. He said, and you shall say unto him, friend, give me three loaves of bread, maybe. He said, for a friend of mine is in his journey and is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. Listen to this. For the door is now shut. And my children are in the bed. And I cannot rise up and I cannot give you. He said, Your friend will answer you that, See, I know we are friends, but at this particular point in time, I cannot answer your request. I cannot give you this thing. Now, verse 8 says, I say unto you, though he will not stand up and give you because he is your friend. See, there are some things that God will not give you just because he is God. There are some things that God will not give you just because he's your father. And I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you in the scriptures. Now, he said, yet because of your persistence, he will rise up and he will give you as many as you need. This is the example number two. And it will interest you to note that it was Jesus that was talking here. It was not a disciple. It was not an apostle that was teaching us about prayer here. He said, he will not rise up to give you because he's your friend. But he will rise up to give you because of your persistence. He now said that, for I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. These are three different levels of prayer. Asking is not the same as seeking. And seeking is not the same as knocking. But many of us will stay at the level one, not moving closer to the level two. And neglecting the level three. So when you ask God something and you don't get it, you just give up. That's an error. Because there is another level that seeks. And there is another level that knocks. Now verse 10 says, For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeketh will find, and he that knocks, the door will be opened. And I've just come to ask you, have you, have you seeked? And have you knocked on the things you asked God for? Before you gave up and you said that God didn't answer your prayer, did you seek? Did you knock? See, there are so many things that prayer can accomplish in our life. If only we understand the power of prayer. 
And I'm not, I'm not standing here to talk to you because based on what I've read in the Bible, I'm talking here from a practical sense of view. There are some things that have been lifted because of prayer. And only prayer. There are some things that God will not take away in your life. Just because a man of God laid hands on you. There are some things that will not leave you based on impartation. Joshua Selman said something. He said there are some wells that you have to dig yourself. And how do you dig them? You dig them in the place of prayer. You dig them in the place of prayer. See, let me tell you something. There was a man in the Bible. His name was Jacob. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 32, he said, this man, Jacob, when he wanted to pray, he said he looked for a particular time. Let's, let's, let's look at what Jacob did. Genesis 32. Genesis 32. Manashakabaraninasikedebosayadabaihalagara. You are the mighty God. Ainla to be you. You are the glorious God. Halagara. There is something God wants to do this morning that after today's prayer there is a fire that will be kindled inside of you. Now let's go to Genesis 32. Lord open our eyes to see these secrets. Open our eyes to see these secrets. There are men that don't take no for an answer. Hallelujah. Genesis 32. Are we there? Ashana Kotaya Katabaya Kataba. From verse 22. And Jacob rose up at night and took his wife, his two wives, and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the fourth Jacob, Jabok. And he took them and he sent them over the brook and sent them that all that he had. Hallelujah. It is first of all known, known that there is some, some particular kind of prayer that you cannot pray with people. Hallelujah. We see here that Jacob sent people away. Say, I know you are my friend. I know you are my family, but I need a time. I need a time alone. Hallelujah. There are some prayers that you cannot pray in prayer meeting. Hallelujah. Now, from verse 24, he said, And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled with him a man, with him until the breaking of the day. And when he had saw that he prevailed not, look here, this man was God. And the Bible said that this man said he didn't prevail. Now we shall go ahead. He said, when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joints. And as he wrestled with him, and he said unto Jacob, Jacob, let me go. God is saying to a man, let me go. 
See, sometimes it's not that God doesn't want to answer your prayer, but it's looking at the level of your desperation. Because sometimes when you are not so much desperate, you do not deserve the thing you are asking for. There was a man named John Ox. This man said that, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. He said that, is that that you give me Scotland or you just kill me? Joshua someone prayed for the anointing of God and God asked him a question. He said, can I trust you? Why would God ask a man, can I trust you? That means there are some things that you do not deserve. If you've not persevered enough in prayer, God will never give you. So God was speaking to Jacob here. He said, He said, Let me go. For the day break it. See, let me tell you something. There are times and there are seasons in the spirit. There are times that you have to persevere. And if only you will hold on up to a present moment, God can get tired. God can get tired. There is another scripture to prove that. Hallelujah. He said, For the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, My name is Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and what thou hast prevailed. Jacob was a man that prevailed over God. This is what the Bible says. In the place of prayer, there is a prayer that prevails. Jesus said, ask, seek, and then knock. See, when you begin to seek, your body is no more, you are no more comfortable with the level that you are in. And then when you begin to knock, it shows a level of desperation and a, a level of disturbance. When I go to pastor in this room and I want something, then I knock and it's not answering me. And then I go back. I, I see if I can get it somewhere else. Then if I notice that I cannot get it somewhere else, I will go back and then I will keep on knocking until it opens up. There is a level of desperation that God wants us to enter. And I'm speaking to someone here today. Because this is not a message that I prepared. No. This is a message that was given. This is a message that was given. That if only you will get tired of that state, trust me. If only you just get tired and be so much desperate. There will be a shift. He said, Jacob was a man. He prevailed over God in prayer. We would have questioned that statement if it was Jacob that made the statement. But God himself spoke it. He said, you prevailed over God and man. So therefore, the Bible went ahead to say, and God blessed him dear. And trust me, there are some things that we've done that we entered into by our own weakness. But yet God wants us to cry out to him in desperation. The Bible made a parable and the Bible said that there was a man, he had a field and he sold on the, on the field and the man left and the men that were supposed to keep watch on that field, the Bible said they slept and the Bible made us understand that and the enemy came and planted tears in the wheat, in, I mean wheat, with the, with the wheat, he planted tears. It made me to understand that the enemy can plant some things in your life that God didn't plant. And they will keep on growing together. And sometimes these things, we are tired of them. And we've looked for a place that we just wish that somebody can take it away. Manasi antaya da But they are not going. They are not living. Jesus said, if only you will be tired. The book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7, uh, verse 14 says that if the people that are called by my name, if they will humble themselves 
and pray and seek my face. That means it is not just enough to pray. It is also important to seek the face of the Lord. To stay in the place of prayer. To stay and to say, God, if this thing doesn't go away, we will be here. If you don't give me this thing, then we will remain here. But because one thing is sure, God has it. God, God has it. God has the answer. So why is he not giving it to you? So the Bible said it is wisdom to stay. It is wisdom to stay. I'll, I'll, I'll let us open one more scripture and then we'll see where we'll go from there. Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. From verse 6 to 7. I'm, I'm, I want to open our eyes to see that there is a prevailing prayer. There is a prayer. There is another prayer. But then there is a prevailing prayer. There is a prayer that you pray and then makes you to prevail. This one is not about I'm beautiful. It's not about I'm, I'm handsome. It's not about I'm this or that. It's about humility. He said, if they will be humble and just say, God, see, I know you are the one that knows me to the end. And I know you have this answer. So I will not leave here until, until you answer this thing. Only you know yourself the best. So I will not leave this place. There has been a prophecy over my family that at a certain age of this, of, of, at, at a particular age, this thing will always happen. This thing will always happen. I've seen it in the life of my brother. I've seen it in the life of my sister. Lord, I'm approaching this same age. I will not let you go until you bless me. There is a prevailing prayer. Arome Osai said, Apostle Arome said, that at the age of 21, he always noticed that something always happened in his family. And then his brothers, I mean his siblings, the first one at the age of 21, that, that calamity met up with him. He said, then, I think they thought simply, then they, they took that one to the hospital. The doctors checked, checked, checked at the age of 21 and they didn't find out anything. He said, at that age, I was 19 years old. So I knew that I had two years into this experience. So he did what? He waited on the Lord. And he made one statement that I will never, I will never forget. He said, as I waited on the Lord, I began to realize that the devil is not as powerful as he seems to be. There is power in waiting on God. The Bible said that those that shall wait upon the name of the Lord, or upon the Lord, it said they shall renew their strength. Renewal of strength is there. It's not talking about you renewing your strength. It's talking about an exchange of strength with God. That God will take your weakness and He will give you his strength. We've tried to do many things according to our will, but it has to get to a point that you have to humble yourself. That's why God used that statement. If they will humble themselves and say that, Lord, at this point, we need you to heal our land, our land with your life. He said, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, meanwhile, seeking takes time. And I'm here to proclaim to you that God is costly. God is not cheap. God is not cheap. Salvation is cheap. Is cheap. But experiences in God, they are not cheap. They take time. They take time. Isaiah 62, from verse 6. He said, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day or night. Why? He said, they shall make mention of the Lord and they will never keep silent. 
Now verse 7 explains everything. He said, And give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a place of the earth, upon the earth. Give him no rest. God is saying that if you don't give me rest till I make establish the promises I made upon your life. God is saying, keep on reminding me till I make it, till I fulfill it. For the fact that the prophecy came over you doesn't mean it will automatically uh, 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 actualize. He said, keep on reminding me. Keep on telling me. Keep on waiting upon me. Keep on reminding me. Keep on telling me. Just like Jacob, I will not let you go. I will give you no rest. Jesus said that that particular friend, he will not stand up to give you because he's your friend. No, no, no. He said he will stand up to give you because of your persistence. You were knocking on his door in the midnight. He said, stand up, stand up and give me loaves of bread. I have, I, I, have a, I, I have a friend that is joining this evening. This midnight is coming soon. Stand up. He said he will not stand up to give you because he's your friend. He said he will stand up because you were disturbing him too much. And the Bible said in the book of Luke chapter 18, if you read the old chapter 18, the judge said, I am not going to give this woman. He said, even you know, I, I know, I don't fear God, I don't fear man. He said, but because of our persistence, our persistence, Lord, there is a weakness inside of me. And I know that you have the answer. You can take this thing away. Lord, I know that you can lift this cause. It's not about, a, a prophet said there, there is a cause. I have seen this cause in my family. I have seen it run. But I know that you, you said in your word, those that wait upon you, you shall renew their strength. Persistence. Are you tired? Are you determined? He said, ask, seek, then knock. If, if you ask and it's not giving you, he said, have you sought? If you sought and you didn't find, have you knocked? Knocking means disturbance. And yes, the Bible said we should give God no rest. God is asking you, don't give me rest. But you are, you are there, you are pitying God. Oh God, no. I'm back again. Yes, you are back again. Jacob wrestled with God. He said, I will not let you go. And the Bible, that passage made us understand that God has a limit. Because it got to a point, the Bible said God noticed that it was getting to daybreak. That means there's a particular time that it's not supposed to be gay. And he said, that was his limit. He said, it is getting to my limit. Let me go. He said, I will not let you go. Unless you bless me. I will not let you go, oh Lord, unless you take away this affinity. I will not let you go, oh Lord, unless you lift this cause. See, we, have come, we, we should understand that this is not the message of grace. That the, Jesus has done everything. See, even Jesus said that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. That means Jesus did not dispute the fact that there was a mountain. There is a problem that you have to speak to. I will not let you go. And I just want us to open to one last um, scripture. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. The Bible made me to understand that Jesus, God, stands like a a refiner. Who is a refiner? A refiner is somebody that takes something and will not let go of that thing until that thing looks pure. Until that thing is clean. Now let us look at the Bible. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3. And it said, And it shall sit as a refiner and purifier of, of silver. He's talking about, about God here. And he shall purify the sons of Levi 
and pour them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now my point is, a refiner is somebody that um, he works with fire. So when he places you, he places you in fire. But there is one thing that is sure, he will, he will never leave anybody in the fire. That's why the Bible said he sits there. But as for the fire, they must go through it. As for the prayer, you must pray. God will not leave you. There is no place in the Bible that says, keep on praying, God is coming. No, no, no. As you are praying, He's with you. But He will make sure you are there till some things leave you. He will make sure you are there till some things leave you alone. If you read John chapter 15, He said, if you abide in God, and his word abide in you, then you shall produce much fruit. What is he talking about? See, the book of Psalms chapter 91 said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So abiding in God means dwelling in the secret place. He said, if you abide in him and his words in you, God wants you to be persistent in prayer. There are some things you prayed about he, he gave you. There are some things you prayed about he has not given you because you've not been persistent. How, how desperately do you want it? How desperately do you want it? And I've just come today to give you this message that if only you will be humble, like the Bible said, and seek the face of the Lord. Seeking takes time. Waiting takes time. The Bible said the Spirit of God searcheth all things. Yes, even the deep things of God. But I'm here to tell you that searching takes time. If you can just wait with God, because God doesn't just want to answer your problem. No. He's much more in, in, interested in the person praying than the problem. So as you are praying, he's also navigating. Okay, you see a problem with this. You see a problem with this. You do not see it, but it's your maker. He knows how he made you. He knows how he made you. He said the enemy has done this. The Bible said, for it was not so from the beginning. Which beginning? It was talking about when I made him. I knew that there were some things that were not in. If you will be like the widow, if you will be like Jacob, if you will be like that friend that has persistence in prayer. See, Jacob was tired. In fact, the Bible said that God intentionally dislocated his joints just to gain advantage over him. He said, but he kept on going. Sometimes we are fasting, but we are just tired, we are just ex exhausted. But he said, just keep on going. See, to a believer, prayer is not a question of if you pray. Jesus said that, but when you pray, that means as for prayer, you must pray. And Jesus said in the book of Luke 18 chapter 1 verse 1 said, men ought always to pray and not to faint Matthew 21 13 he said my house shall be called the house of prayer but he said but you have made it a den of thieves a den of thieves means there are some things that were not supposed to be there but because you cease to pray it happened because you cease to pray there was some seed and how do you take it away Prayer is also the solution. There are some wells no one will dig for you. Pastor Eddie will stand here, we pray for you. Even in Bible Day, what for prayer meeting, we pray for the rose away. But there are some wells you will never dig. I was praying one day and I entered into a vision concerning someone. And I wanted to open a particular door. God told me clearly, this one, only I can open it. 
Galason wells. It takes just you. I spoke with this person. The person prayed about it and it was like a joke. It happened. There are some things it will never go away unless you take responsibility. Because God said, I have made you a king and a priest. That means you have an anointing to pray. Every believer has an anointing to pray individually. It was not so from the beginning. But if they will humble themselves and pray, can we get up on our feet and just, just move around? Just look at anybody. Just go ahead and pray. Just go ahead and pray. Lord, I know my own weakness. But I call upon your name, O oh Lord. I call upon your name, O oh Lord. Garana sine rebo shakatabaya gadabaya. Don't look at anybody, just go ahead in your own space. Just pray, just pray. In your own space, just pray. God, we believe you. We believe what you say in your world. That if we humble ourselves and we pray, you will come down and you will have sound. You will grow out of every disease. You will kill our body.
if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I know I have these weaknesses. When it comes to this area of my life, my will is not in operation. I am addicted to this thing. I am addicted to that thing. I want you to lift up your voice. Papa, 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 Papa,
Oh, 